Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. And our top story today, it's College Savings Month and retirees are launching their third act. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Mary Morris is the Chief Executive Officer for Virginia 529. Mary, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us in the program this morning. Hey, good morning. It's good to see you as always. Uh, it, it is. And I love talking with retirement with you. I also love talking education with you. Uh, Mary, let's start with Americans living longer. So we've got greater longevity and they're in better health. That's always a po positive, really, at Hi. least from their perspective. Um, how has this changed how we define retirement? <laughs> I put myself in that group and I was like, oh, I'm right there. It's like, uh, well, for a lot, retirement is time for your, your next act, your third act, if you will. Uh, you know, for many, if you can retire in your 50s, even into your early 60s, you've got a long ways to go, hopefully, if you have stayed engaged. And taking courses keeps your mind engaged. So even if you want to take classes just to get out um, for social engagement, to for personal growth, to keep your, your, your brain working, it's a great idea and there are many opportunities. But... You know, for a lot, it's a chance to take what they've learned over a lifetime and apply it to something a little bit different, whether that's consulting, it's a whole new field, uh, you know, whatever it might be. And a lot of times you need education for that. Uh, and again, it could be new learning. It could just be enhancing your computer or social media skills. So you might need a certificate program. You might just need some non-credit classes or you might go for a whole brand new degree. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about some of the big topic, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence. But as you said, it could be consulting. One of the things we saw, Mary, post-pandemic was more Americans interested in the gig economy. So uh, maybe doing several jobs and doing it for multiple employers. Are mature Americans, you know, people in, in our category, embracing that trend? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. You know, at least what you hear. And when I see people out and about, you you will find that looking at different opportunities. I think particularly coming out of the pandemic, uh, some folks who worked in an office and, and felt like they needed to come back and maybe didn't want to, or they got used to having a more flexible lifestyle, have thought about, well, how might I make that happen? And, uh, you know, so that you have some opportunities. What we've been talking about for a long time in 529 programs, and I try to tell everybody, everyone should have a 529 account. You just keep it for forever. Start it when you're young. Um, whether you have kids or not, you may want to go back to school yourself. If you have kids, you can change the ownership. If you don't end up using it for those children or, you know, you go through life, you bring it back in and use it for yourself. Uh, you know, so there's just a lot of flexibility there and you just never know. And, you know, we saw this during the recession back in, in you know, the late aughts. Um, you know, you've seen, seen a little bit during the pandemic. Just life interrupts sometimes at whatever age you are. You could be in your 40s and realize where I am is a dead end. Uh, that job has gone away. Um, you know, everyone's freaking out a little bit these days about AI and how that's going to impact employment. And so, one, you might want to take some classes to understand what is artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, the different uses for it, uh, and how that might impact you and how you can make sure that you can incorporate that into your future. So, the possibilities are endless and having an opportunity to plan and save for it. And that's obviously where a 529 comes in. You know, some of the things I've read about this are, you know, seniors are taking out loans to go back to school. And, you know, every time I read that, I go, well, just if you'd started that 529, you know, once the kids were out of school, just keep putting a little bit of money in for yourself. You just never know when you might be able to use it. Uh, you know, you've got some opportunities. And, and now with the Roth rollover opportunities that are coming in 2024, again, tying retirement to education savings, you've got more opportunities as well. A really good point. And, and it is College Savings Month. I should have, should have acknowledged that to begin with. Our, you, you talk about the 529, and we're going to get into some of the education options in the second segment. But to your point, and, and when you started talking about taking out a loan, I thought I thought about $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. But are mature Americans, from your perspective, because you have one of the largest 529 plans in the country, uh, not you particularly, but you, you manage, you have oversight of it. Yeah, is, that, is that a big source of education planning for mature Americans like us? Not yet. 
I don't think, you know, the majority still of our accounts are, are for those, our families are for adults with younger children who are planning for their futures. But we're seeing a little bit of an uptick in that. I think we are seeing people hold on to their accounts. I mean, if they don't spend them entirely, and I think we've always had that. You know, we, we, we do plot out where we, we can see the trajectory and 529 accounts, you know, historically have been used the way they, I think they were intended. Uh, you know, there's always been this thought, oh, people are just going to use them for the tax advantages. Don't see that happening. They, they use it because they want to plan for education. So you see a steady climb if you have a beneficiary who's a child. And when they reach age 18, they start to use it. But it also plateaus out. And you can look at 21, 22, 25, and there's still money in those accounts frequently. You know, they don't, it doesn't just all, the way go, all of a sudden go down to zero in all of those accounts. So that tells me that people are using them differently. Maybe they're holding on to it because they had a child that got a scholarship, but they know they want to go to grad school. And of course, you can use your 529 account for graduate school. I think that's the nice thing. And, and the word we're trying to get out to folks at, at any age, you can use your 529 account for a, a, a wide variety of educational options. It's not just for bricks and mortar four year education. Right. It can be used for certificate and credential programs. It can be used, uh, you know, even for some non-credit courses if there's a, if a cost. You don't get all of the um, other deductions like for room and board right now unless you're in a, a degree program and, and taking a certain number of hours. But the, the cost themselves, and again, for seniors, there's some really nice options. Uh, I've been learning a little bit about it. There are a lot of sort of non-credit options. What is it? The Osher? Um, Lifelong Learning Institute, which is in, I think, 125 universities. I know George Mason in Virginia is one of them. I believe UNC, the UNC system participates and just provides opportunities to take a lot of interesting courses at a very reduced cost for seniors. Um, a lot of colleges also make the application process easier for seniors and have some tuition waivers and grant programs for seniors as well. Um, so as with everything, no matter what age you are, you should do your research. Uh, you know, find the best opportunities for you, find a program that works for you. If you have a 529 account, so if you've been saving, you've got some money set aside, that's just a bonus, right? That really helps. But there may be other ways that you can make it, again, really affordable and something that will really boost you into, into your future. And, you know, I, I know the older I get, I push out what I think is old um, every year. It goes, oh, well, let's see, maybe 90 you're starting to get, I, you know, really it gets to be a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much out there. So you've got a lot of time after most people retire to have a really nice and interesting life you know, I, I taught at the college level. I have been involved in education my whole life. So I love it. The opportunity to take classes, to keep learning is really important. You know, I do a lot of just continuing education myself. I go to a lot of conferences now as a working adult. And I love that. I love to sit in the classroom and have people impart information to me or be able to discuss new ideas. Um, it's just a great way to stay engaged uh, and to stay up to date on things and, and to really have a better life, no matter what age you are. Yeah, really good points, Mary. I, I need to take a very quick break. Can we come back? We could, sorry, three, two, one. Really good points, Mary. I need to take a very quick break. Can we come back? We're going to talk about retirement planning and integrating it with 529 plans. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 
33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Invesco's latest Show Me the Income study reflects on the evolving retirement industry today as it faces the pressing need to help participants turn their defined contribution plan savings into long-term retirement income. Key findings from the research uncover that nearly seven in 10 participants fear running out of money in retirement. And only 22% were very confident they could create a retirement income strategy on their own. What can employers do to help? To learn more about the study and request the white paper, visit Invesco.com slash retirement income or contact your Invesco DC professional. Cited research is based on Invesco's work with Greenwald Research. Invesco is not affiliated with Greenwald Research. Invesco Advisors, Inc. is an investment advisor that provides investment advisory and does not sell securities. Invesco Distributors, Inc. is the U.S. distributor for Invesco's retail products and private placements. Both are indirect wholly owned subsidiaries of Invesco Limited. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Mary Morris, the Chief Executive Officer of Virginia 529. Mary, thanks as always for staying with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two. Of course, good to be with you yeah. always. It, it is fun, and I wonder if you know. I had to take the SATs when I went when I went to college initially. I wonder if you go when you go back if you continue ed, if you have to have any standardized testing. I think they they got rid of that, but if they do, I, I'm going to be in some real trouble. Um, Mary, let's. <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. I don't want to offend anybody in the SAT arena. Let's talk about um, how do you integrate the third act we're talking about education continuing into retirement planning because you mentioned there is a conversion that can happen from the five to nine into the retirement plan but let's let's talk about that how do you how do you integrate what we're talking about which is continuous learning into your retirement planning well you know with a lot of things and, and some of what we do at virginia five to nine because our mandates include education savings we also do disability savings through our able programs and then now most recently we've launched retire path which is a uh, an option for those who are employed in virginia uh, where they don't have a retirement planning option with their employer already um, and, and so that's made us think about how you put all those things together and then yeah the fact that um, secure 2.0 that was enacted at the end of last year um, provides an opportunity that again ties together 529 education savings accounts with retirement accounts um, by allowing someone if you've had a 529 account for 15 years or more so there are some quite there are some requirements on it that you just have to pay attention to you have to have had the account for 15 years um, the amount of money that can be transferred from a 529 account into a Roth IRA is limited by the amount that was in there five years before you make that transfer. And again, it's just all trying to keep people from dumping a lot of money into a 529 account and then moving it into a retirement account. Um, I, I think the opportunities for that were limited already by the fact that um, the amount you can put in in any one year is also limited by what one can put into their Roth IRA. So I don't think they needed all those guardrails, but they exist, so we will deal with them. Um, but if you've had an account, you know, as we were talking about earlier, you might start one when when you're younger, when you have young children, you have the opportunity, a grandparent might start it for their grandchildren. Um, so that's where you can get into the retirees who may have an account that they could tap into. Um, you know, whatever the circumstances are, you may have had that 529 account for a long time now. You know, we've been around for over 30 years in, in the industry. Some prepaid plans go back into the 80s. So people have been investing in these programs for a long time. If they have money that's left and there are some reasons you don't want to pull your money out without using it for a qualified expense, you know, you may pay taxes on the gains. You also may owe a penalty on the gain, only on the gain, um, because the monies into a 529 have been pre-tax. Um, but now with this Roth rollover, you've got yet one more way to move your money out, to use it in a way that is still tax advantaged, still really important. Um, and the whole education piece of it comes with it. So um, you can, it's a maximum $35,000 
dollars that can be moved into a Roth IRA. You have to do that over a number of years, but there is that opportunity to do a little bit of planning that way as well. So again, even if you're um, older and you start a 529 account for yourself, you hold on to it, you may be able to, do, and you don't use it for education, you could be using it for other things. So, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to just our emphasis on education in general and planning, you know, understanding your needs, understanding some basics of finances, planning, budgeting, thinking about how do you save, how do you save effectively, how do you save in a tax advantaged way um, for some of life's most important things education, disability, retirement. Uh, you know, the, the, the two things that come up in any survey I've ever seen, what do people worry about in, with respect to finances? And it's how do I pay for my retirement? And how do I pay for, most of the time, my kids' education? I would hope to expand that to my education, to anybody's education. Um, you know, every time I hear the whole student loan debate and everyone's talking about what do we do into the future and how do we deal with this? And, 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 and they never mention 529 accounts. It's like, put those together, people. If you start planning and saving now in a 529 account, you can avoid most of those problems because you're also going to be learning about how to plan and save, how to budget. Uh, most 529 plans will also give you a lot of information on how to make college more affordable. You know, thinking about having your child enrolled in dual enrollment so they get some college credits while they're still in high school. Using the community college as a way to get your first two years under your belt for a much reduced cost and then going on to that four-year degree. Thinking about certificate programs, credentials, maybe, you know, your student or yourself. You're 25, you didn't go to college, you're 35, you're 45, and that's where that older adult can come in. You, you didn't, you know, you weren't that crazy about school in the first place, you aren't too sure about it but you also feel like you're just stuck and how am I going to proceed the rest of my life? There are so many programs now, so many opportunities to take a six week, a 12 week course. Competency based education opportunities are increasing. So everything you've learned as an adult working, the skills you've learned, the, the people skills, how to cooperate, how to collaborate, how to be a team member, how to plan a project. Those are skills that every employer wants. Uh, you know, and if you can get a credential that shows some particular skill, you can apply that and, and really just increase your earning potential, which means you're going to have a better life now and a better life into the future. You're going to be able to fund that retirement account because you're making more money. Hopefully, maybe you're going to be working for an employer that offers a retirement plan and you're going to be able to save more effectively. So it, it's just all so tied together, uh, just general financial education and thinking about the future what your needs are going to be, and finding the people that can help you plan for that future. There is a greater connectivity, and, and uh, you mentioned people skills. That's one thing that I don't believe artificial intelligence will be able to replace. You can't, you can't replace how the interaction between people. Mary, I can't let you go without talking briefly about retire, retire path. You talked about it in the first segment, real brief. Can we get an update on where things stand and, and if, if employers are watching the program in the Commonwealth, how do they sign up? Yes, please pay attention, employers in the Commonwealth. Um, in Virginia, we just opened, we, we were the sixth or seventh, I guess, program in the country to open, um, the first in the South to open a, what are called state facilitated private retirement programs. Uh, and it's an opportunity for, for generally smaller employers or employers in areas where they may have a lot of turnover. There's just, there are a lot of reasons that employers don't offer retirement plan. We find it tends to be in retail sales, agriculture, Culture, construction, those types of arenas. Um, this is an opportunity for those employers to participate. And in Virginia, they must participate if they've been in business for at least two years, don't offer their own retirement plan, and have at least 25 employees who work at least 30 hours a week. So we have a few, few criteria in there. It's about 8,500 employers in the Commonwealth uh, and about 800,000 employees who potentially will tap into this program. 
the employers have to participate. All that means is that they have to upload their employee census to us and we take over from there. Our partner, Bestwell and Bank of New York Mellon uh, are helping with that part of it. And, uh, you know, Retire Path Virginia is the name of that program. And it provides uh, the primary as a Roth IRA, um, but there also is an option for a traditional IRA product. And the employee can always opt out. That is entirely optional. The employer has to participate or offer their own retirement program, but the employees can always opt out. It's going really well. We open just before the end of June, so we only have a few months under our belt, um, but so far, you know, knock on wood, everything has been going smoothly. Employers are, are onboarding. Uh, we had some pilot participants who were great, so we have some really wonderful materials on the Retire Path VA website um, where you can listen to other employers and see what their experience has been and why they're excited to, to make this opportunity available to their employees. And that's what we're finding. I think there's, you know, until you do it, and we've seen that in other states, you think, oh my gosh, it's one more mandate, something I have to do, it's gonna be onerous. And it, it really falls on, on us, the states, to say no. This is to take that away from you, the employers. You don't have a fiduciary responsibility for it. Not only do you not have to contribute on behalf of your employees, you're not allowed to in this program. Um, in the future, if you want to offer your own program, that's great. You set up a 401k and you can port all of the money that's in Retire Path now into that new employer program. But to get started, it's really easy for the employers, and they're telling us that. Um, you know, our charge is to make sure that it's easy, that it's seamless um, for the employers and the employees, and it's a way to get people started, and that's what they see. They know how important it is. Uh, I think a lot of employers have felt badly that they didn't provide that for their employees. So to be able to have it offered to them by the state, a program that they feel that they can trust, that is professionally managed, um, has low fees, and, and provides something really important for them and their employees, I think really gives some peace of mind to employers. So yes, if you're listening in Virginia, please, please, please go to retirepathva.com and it'll give you all the information you need to get started. Um, you should have gotten a letter from us. We have another letter coming out. I believe that they're going out this week. Um, uh, encouraging employers to sign up early. Um, you do have a little bit of time to do it, but do it now. I'll just do it before the end of the year while you're thinking about it and um, get it done and get your employees on the path to a better future. Yeah, a really good point, Mary. And I kind of liken it to an exercise program. You just got to get started, get the reps in and keep building from there. And that's how you build a retirement nest egg. You don't have to start off with a million dollars or even a thousand dollars. You can start building it over time. Mary, we're going to have to leave it there. Great conversation as always. Great to see you. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, and drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, aging, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another great edition of BRNAM. We'll have a very special guest. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. Don't forget. Roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.